clear if that's actually true. It's kind of um, transplanting an idea that's true of other fundamental forces in nature, and carrying it both to gravity. Um, so it's not clear if it's really applicable, but certainly an idea. But two of you mentioned this idea also of the fact that maybe it isn't quite a force after all, even though we kind of think of it as such, but it's something totally different. And in fact, it's related to the fact that space is not just a sort of um, static Cartesian coordinate system sort of backdrop on which play, things play out. But it's the idea that mass itself um, tends to curve and warp space around it. And this is, of course, the idea underlying uh, Einstein's general theory of relativity, which we talked about on the first day. So these are all actually surprisingly current, interesting ideas. We still don't understand how gravity works. But to a good approximation on large scales, when we're not in two extreme environments, this works pretty well. All right? OK. So, now we've got a more general force law. What we're going to do is immediately extend this to cases where we have multiple masses. And, no big surprise, we're just going to apply the idea of superposition, as we've done throughout the semester. So when we had free body diagrams back in the day, we did superposition of forces to find their forces, accelerations, so on and so forth. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And there's so little to say about this, um, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that. Other than to say, we may have to worry about different directions of gravitational forces acting. So, not a particularly realistic example. But, you know, instead of having two objects like this, if we have three objects like this, of course, there are gravitational forces between all of them. So we have to look at permutations of forces. And if, for example, we were trying to figure out the net gravitational force on M3, I'd need to worry about the fact that this one is being pulled towards M1. And it is being pulled towards M2. And I have to do a usual superposition of forces to get net force in this case. Okay? So that's all I need to worry about, and the fact that there's now a directional dependence here, and I will need to do a vector summation of those forces to get that force. All right, so all fairly uh, straightforward. Let me just come back briefly to say something about little g, the local acceleration due to gravity, and just elaborate on that slightly. Um, and then we're going to talk about, before closing, <coughs> gravitational potential energy. So let me come over here. Acceleration is this, or simplified as this. 
Okay, so what does it look like? Uh, Newtonian gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, these two things are fixed. And obviously a 1 over r squared would have the mass. So, when we talk about the local acceleration due to gravity, we're generally talking about an average value of this constant at the Earth's surface, or average over the entire Earth's surface. So, or r equals the radius of the Earth. Quick general knowledge question. Estimate of the radius of the Earth. How big is the Earth, roughly?
I've never done this before, but you're getting an F. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Seriously? <laughs> this is 40,000 kilometers. How far away is it? Okay, so it moves about a quarter of a million miles away, so 400,000 kilometers. So this is a tenth of the way to the moon. Oh, okay. Huh? I'll redeem myself. Okay. <laughs> is that like about like the end of the atmosphere? Or? Actually, the atmosphere runs out way lower. It's kind of not, it depends how you measure it. Of course, it's a continuum. But the atmosphere is really only about 20 kilometers. Yes? Is that where the Tesla is floating around in the rocket? No, it's not. Actually, it's quite like around it. I don't think it's this high. But we're not sure. Okay, last, last day. We'll go to the All right. Geostationary satellites. Okay. So, satellites, geostationary, ones that we put in orbit, we talked about this on Thursday now at this point, so that they're moving at precisely the speed that they stay above a fixed point on the Earth all the time. Those are very useful for things like communications. Um, you know, if you're using satellites to bounce signals around, you'd like them to be in kind of predictable the same place all the time. So, if you are at about the altitude of a geostationary satellite, the local acceleration due to gravity is about 0.2 meters per second squared in this case. All right. So, let's see what we're doing. I'm about to run out of time. Geez, I'm not going to have time to fully go through our calculation of gravitational potential energy. <coughs> just, um, just as we're wrapping up here, first thing on Thursday, because I'm running behind, we're going to talk about the derivation of a general expression for gravitational potential energy. And make sure you're awake. How did we determine the expression for near-Earth gravitational potential energy quantum unity? gravitational force. How do I define potential energy? Like equation. Alright, so that's how we got it um, for near Earth gravity. So this is a near Earth MPH or MG white. How did we get there? How did we derive that? Yeah. What was I into really? Okay, so let me remind you that we can always talk about changes in potential energy as the negative of the work done by a conservative force. Let me remind you, we're still talking about gravitation. It's definitely a conservative force. So we expect to be able to define a gravitational potential energy. And so here, I'm talking about work done by gravity Yes, I'm going to need to worry about a, let's call it a force times displacement integral as I move over a range of separations here, okay? So the thing we're going to do first thing in class on Thursday, and I'm going to try and move quickly at the start of class on Thursday because I do want to cover some of the more fun stuff about gravitation. I'm going to quickly calculate this by plugging in Fg from wherever I have it on the tool board now, all right? I'm going to get a more general expression for gravitational potential energy. Okay, let's stop there before you collect everything. Reminders of a few things. If you tried energy conservation in the second problem on the midterm, please bring back your exam script to me. You need to pass on now. I don't have office hours. I have my dad's if anyone's interested in the lunch on Thursday, if you get to the the slot, send me an email. Okay, thank you guys on
don't want to ask like that. They're like, yeah. exclusive people. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm gonna fuck you up today. Yeah, exactly. Like, straight. <laughs>
I went off. Yeah. I forgot something. I forgot to put that joke in. Oh, no, you forgot to put the fuel back. Yeah, back. Yeah. What if you did take off? Fuel uh, could have been. Wow, no fuel. It's not stopped. It's like, hey, pull it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn